I wanted to know what the last four years were like for you, because I know you've been paying attention to the UN said we have 12 years that takes us to 2030. And then we had four years of, of Trump and he was really focused on going against the environment and going against uh, being xenophobic, having racist comments and policies uh, and being anti-feminist. And so these are all the things that you care about. So what did that feel like for you to, to be watching the clock and have those four years? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, complicated, right? Because if, if I, I published um, th This Changes Everything in 2014 and when I, you know, I had an occasion to reread the introduction, somebody wanted to, to reprint it, and I was just doing like a very light edit on it. And I was really struck, you know, when that book came out, it was treated as like quite an optimistic book, like, you know, we can really, we can do this, we've got a decade, right? Um, but if you go back and you read it now, and you realize, um, you know, where we are six, six years later, um, and how little we've done, uh, it's, 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 it's a much more sobering read, really. Um, so what's it been like for me? I mean, I moved to the States, first of all. <laughs> um, I've been living, you know, I took this job at Rutgers um, uh, three years ago. And I did it because, frankly, I wanted to be in the U.S. during the Trump years. I know that sounds a little weird. <laughs> um, I've lived in Canada my whole life. Um, but I just thought that it was so important to really um, lose that little bit of distance that I've always had as a Canadian when it comes to American politics. You know, I've always written about American politics and I've done, spent a lot of time visiting um, the US and participating, but I've always had that sort of safe Canadian distance. Um, and, and, I, and I felt like for the Trump years, I wanted to lose that and just really be in with both feet and be part of the movement that was emerging to, to, to try to get him out as soon as we could and also be in a different place once we got him out, right? And that's how I, what I would say about the moment that, that, that we're in right now um, is that, you know, if you look at the Biden administration, it's the same old in lots of ways, right? It's very familiar. There's something very 90s about, 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 about the whole thing. Um, and, you know, and at minimum, it's a kind of a, like it, a return to the Obama era and a lot of familiar Obama figures are, are going to power. Um, but what I would say about the movements is that the, the movements are different. The social movements are different. You know, you put up that quote from No, It's Not Enough that I wrote, you know, I wrote No, It's Not Enough in ju just a few months after uh, um, Trump came to power. And and I think that movements have done incredible work during these four years beyond just saying no to Trump. I think that that intersectional movement, uh, cross-sectoral organizing has happened in a lot of spaces. Um, you know, you think about a few, like uh, just a few things that, 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 that weren't happening when, when Trump came to power. The Sunrise Movement didn't exist. Um, there was no discussion of a Green New Deal uh, to speak of in the United States. Um, the, the Black Lives Matter movement, um, though it had put out this, this forward facing vision, um, wasn't leading with its alternatives of defunding the police, moving, moving uh, um, uh, that funding to an infrastructure of care in nearly the way that it, that it, that it is now. Um, and so it's actually, I think, quite remarkable that social movements managed to navigate the Trump era doing more than just saying no to Trump, but actually developing bolder demands uh, um, than they had during the Obama years. So my big fear with the Trump era is that we would end up kind of where we started, right? Of just kind of like no to Trump and that's the only thing we have to say, he's a fascist, let's get rid of him. And from a climate perspective, we can't just be where we were because uh, th these are lost years. And so I would say that they had, weren't lost years. I think that there were, there were there, that we, we laid a lot of groundwork. There's the, the, the urgency around climate action is much, much better understood. All, there's been a huge shift in polling, a huge shift in a sense of urgency, a much larger movement, a much more intersectional movement. Um, so, and, and if you look at what Biden is doing, it's, it's already 
uh, um, you know, much, much bolder than anything that we saw under Obama. Chuck Schumer was on um, Rachel Maddow last night, basically talking about the LEAP manifesto. You know, I mean, he was saying we need, we need, we need transformational climate action. We need to center racial justice. We need, uh, we need justice for fossil fuel workers and a real just transition and no worker left behind. Um, you know, during the Obama era, these guys were only were talking about cap and trade. They weren't talking about a just transition. Um, so we have made progress. We have to understand that. Um, and so even if some of the faces are the same, uh, in, in power, the movements have changed. The movements have used these years to go deeper. And do you think that part of that was a response to Trump? Do you think that it uh, intensified the, the what, where we're at now in a positive way? I think that a lot of people really did understand that Trump was a, a sort of morbid system of a symptom of a system in crisis. And that it couldn't just be, oh, this is a giant sort of clerical error, Russia interfered, we just need to go back to the good old days of Obama. And there are people like that who, you know, who have that view. But I think from the, that, that the social movements, the activists really, uh, really took Trump as a wake up call um, to go deeper, to build different kinds of movements. And I, I don't want to overly romanticize it because I think that there's still a ton of work to be done. And, and you know, I could just as easily point to the limitations, but, um, you know, you asked me, Kim, about like just how it feels to kind of look at the climate clock, right? And, and know that we lost those four years. And I do want to say, I don't believe we lost them. We did not stand still during those four years. Um, there was a huge amount of work that was done at the city level, at the state level, um, and, and within social movements, analytic work. Um, and the kind of the radicalism of Gen Z is a real thing. And I'm sure you see this among your students. I mean, there's just, I, I, I noticed just in a three year period with, my, with, with the undergraduates who I teach, where it's just, um, you know, this generation wants to go deep. They wanna talk about the underlying systems, the connective tissue between the issues they care about. They're not interested in being stuck in silos of like climate over here, race over there, gender over here, economic justice over here. You know, and I mean, I haven't even mentioned Bernie Sanders and what that, produced, right? Um, at the beginning of the Trump era, AOC wasn't in politics. <laughs> um, you know, so, the, 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 so there have been changes. There have been major progressive victories in this era.